Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my course, Worldview Studies. So let me share again my PPT. And I want to repeat and summarize what we have covered last time. So we started to look at Confucianism. And uh, this worldview is very old uh, Chinese and ancient Asian worldview, if you can say. And there is a Neo-Confucianism later, also called Song Li Hak in Korean. <clears throat> and it started by Confucius, of course. And as for the background, you can see uh, during the spring and autumn period, it means there are many different uh, countries and nations uh, are were against one another. So it's a very uh, chaotic period uh, with a lot of confusion. And then uh, Confucius uh, appeared from the country of Lu and stressed argued individuals' practice of morality and the four virtues, benevolence, righteousness, propriety, and wisdom are uh, uh, the most important ones. And then came the Han Dynasty, which adopted this worldview as national uh, ideology and policy. Later on in Korea, uh, in the medieval period, around the uh, end of 14th century, uh, Joseon dynasty also adopted this Confucianism instead of Buddhism, which was the national ideology of Korea dynasty before. And now Neo-Confucianism uh, flowered, bloomed greatly in Korea. Now, Confucianism is a worldview of books. You can see four books and five uh, classical uh, books. So here you can find all the important contents of Confucianism. And the most important aspect of this worldview is that it emphasizes moral values. Uh, in addition to the four uh, virtues, also fidelity was emphasized. And it is summarized uh, as the three bonds and five relationships. And uh, it is the morality between the two different groups of people, king and subjects, father and son, husband and wife, elder people, younger people, and among the friends. And uh, Neo-Confucianism in Korea had uh, two major schools, Li and Qi. What is Li? Uh, Li is the principle of the cosmos, and Qi is the manifestation of this Li principle. And these two parties had a lot of debate, especially uh, the so-called 4-7 debate. That is four meaning uh, those four virtues and seven meaning the uh, seven major passions. And this debate is how these two are interrelated but they had a lot of uh, uh, debate, uh, even uh, emotional and political debate. So uh, later on, four parties came out of this debate and they had a lot of political conflict. Ultimately, uh, this Joseon dynasty became very weak and then uh, became the victim of the Japanese imperialism. How about the contents of Confucianism? Uh, first of all, I mentioned uh, what is the really true and greatest existence 
than the concept of heaven chun. Uh, but however, this is quite abstract and it's not a subject of worship nor belief. Second, about the nature of external existence, uh, it is explained through dualistic yin and yang, and uh, that is uh, together called tai chi, te guk, and then yin and yang is also uh, divided into two. Uh, so you can see a uh, big uh, yang and small uh, uh, yin and so on. And then each one is divided into another two. So this is how uh, the Oriental worldview was understood. Number three, on what human beings are, in the uh, Confucian worldview, the moral faithfulness of a person, family, and government is stressed. And therefore, this expression is very famous. You have to uh, discipline yourself first, and then you rule uh, your family, and then you reign your country. Then you can have the power over the whole world. Number four, about human beings to have the knowledge this Confucianism teaches that the world is made in an orderly way. That is understandable. So human beings are able to gain knowledge by the study of things. So we call it Gyeongmul Chiji. So that is quite a good perspective, we can say. And how about morality? as a very detailed standard in this worldview. And the minimum uh, principle is uh, here. What you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others. So this is a very uh, minimum and passive uh, standard of morality. Finally, about the view of history, uh, Confucianism is highly past-oriented because they view the Yao Shun Emperor's ruling period as the ideal period, and the goal is to recover this ideal. So then let me move on to talk about the background of Neo-Confucianism. Then what are the main contents of this Neo-Confucianism? Basically, uh, this world is a mixture of Confucianism with Taoism and some Buddhistic religious aspects. Uh, Neo-Confucianism's background is that during the Tang Dynasty, the influence of Taoism uh, 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 started by uh, Lao Tzu and Buddhism became very uh, strong and Confucianism became weaker. And during the Song Dynasty, a person named Chu Don Yi, in Korean, Chu Don Yi, wrote a book called Tai Chi to show. In Korean, we say do sal. And he spread this metaphysical philosophy. Later, Chu Chi, who was also known as Chu Ji, further developed this idea in his book Chu Zi Anthology. Korean Chu Cha Munjip, which are widely uh, spread this Neo Confucianism. When uh, Song Dynasty made the Neo Confucianism as their founding principle, Joseon Dynasty in Korea followed suit. 
And the basic concept of this worldview is that Tai Chi, Tai Guk, is the start of the universe. And the principle is this. First, there is a dynamic and static aspect. Second, from Tai Chi or Tai Guk, you have Yin and Yang. And yin and yang make a balance and creates everything. Third, tai chi is invisible. Fourth, it consists of everything's origin, li as a principle, and the outcome or manifestation is ki. Finally, to live rightly, one must follow the Ali. Uh, and second, the yin and yang harmonize to create everything. Now, let me move on to uh, uh, explain some representative Korean Neo Confucian thinkers. Well, I have already explained. But the first thinker uh, of uh, Li, Dine, Li school is Tui Ge uh, Yi Wang. Uh, he succeeded and developed the theory of Yi Eun Jok, the founder of Yong Nam school, which saw the universe comprising of Yi and Qi. When one of them is missing, the universe cannot be expressed, but the moral value of Li and Qi is that Li is the only good and non-evil, while Qi can be good or evil, and that Yi has absolute value, whereas Qi has relative value. So, however, Yi Huang claims, as mentioned before, uh, this claims faced a disagreement with the Qi Dei Seng in what is called the 4 7 debate. But Yi Huang uh, stressed that knowing and uh, action go side by side and claimed the basis as Sung and the efforts as Kyung and try his best to practice this. And this theory later formed the Young Nam school and affected the Confucian world. Such teachings of Yi Huang also affected Japan greatly and formed the basis for education philosophy during the Meiji period. Next, Yul Gok Yi also claimed Yi and Ki are one, but he said that Ki is more important. Uh, he claimed so-called Gibal i sung il do sar and was opposed uh, to Tege Yi Huang's Igi Ho Bal Sar. Well, this is uh, quite complicated, but uh, simply speaking, Yi Yi opposed Yi Huang's claim that Qi and Yi are independent of each other. And instead, he claimed that although the universe is made up of two different substances, Yi and Qi are not spatially nor temporally separate, and there is no order of appearance. But E and Q existed since the very beginning and cannot be separated eternally. 
However, Yulgok also claimed that the root of ki is e. So in this case, in this sense, it was like a tuege e huang. Well, Yulgok e e at the age of 23 went to Do San Sawon, that is uh, the school where Tuege Li Huang was teaching. The letters to share the ideas when Tuege died, he wrote a poem in remembrance to mourn. Letter scholars depicted Tuege and Yulgok's relationship as hostile, both academically and politically. However, during their generation, they were good friends, actually, and acknowledged each other. Yulgok was able to train academically through Tuege and used the accomplishments of his senior as stepping stones to establish his own academic world. Now, uh, let me move on then to talk about the strong and weak points of Confucianism in general. And let me start from the strong points of Confucianism. Number one, uh, there is the love and respect for other people. Uh, Confucianism claims that human beings should develop physically and mentally, and at the same time, need to show love and concern for other people. And there are three concepts that show this well. The first is sugi an in, which means taking care of one's own body and mind, and at the same time, comforting other people. Second is chung, and this is to overcome selfish interest and treat other people equally with honesty and a pure heart. Finally, it's so, and it means to be free of selfish heart and be considerate of other people. Number two, the Confucian worldview plans an ideal society. Everyone the society has their own role and standard. Therefore, when those standards are followed, then benevolence will be expanded and an ideal society is possible. The five moral rules are also explanations of what specific people needed to do in their position and their responsibilities. So historically speaking, dynasties that chose Confucianism as their national policy and ideology were able to have a peaceful and stable society initially. It is because it was able to bring about the voluntary obedience of the people. Number three, Confucian worldview stresses the leaders and the people's moral integrity. This kind of a strong point is helpful in modern society where modernization and the development of material civilization has caused rapid secularization, and traditional values are falling apart, and morality in family and society is being ignored 
in what can be called moral enemy state. Furthermore, the loss of authority leading to mentally broken state can be helped by Confucianism that puts stress in basic morality and helps to recover human beings, morality, and humanity. Number four, finally, Confucian worldview helped develop courtesy. And Confucianism puts great emphasis on the practice of benevolence and propriety. Clear standards like the three bonds and five relationships were used and further developed and was the standard to create a culture for coming of age ceremony, marriage, funeral, and ancestral rites to create social order and stability. And this is why Korea was considered as the country of courteous people in the East. And we call it in Korean, Dongbang Ye Ui Ji Guk, and was praised and acknowledged by others. Of course, in modern times, such aspects are greatly weakened, but such aspects can be considered as the good and strong points of Confucianism. Uh, I think I can stop here and uh, next time we will continue to talk about weak points and uh, alternatives. Thank you for your attention and uh, we will see you next time.